Right, and I think we're live. Um, good afternoon, everybody. It's Saturday afternoon. I've come in from the sun, got a little bit of a tan. Well, not a tan. Um, and here we are. We're going to teach you how to play Aeon's End today. Thank you very much to everybody for joining me in the chat. I can see there's quite a few people here in the chat. Some of you already know how to play Aeon's End. I know that, but others of you will be here, hopefully because you either don't know anything about this game or some of you have actually told me that you've got this game on your shelf of shame or your pile of opportunities, I like to call it, and uh, you've, you've always wanted to try and play it. So what we're going to do today is I'm going to be doing a tutorial and playthrough video. We're going to be playing through Aeon's End and we're going to be playing through the very, very first scenario from the core set. Now, if you have bought Aeon's End, then you will have something like this in the box, which says set up for your first game. And that's exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm going to go through the process of what it would be like if you've bought this game for the first time and you've taken it home and you were learning how to play for the first time. This is going to be the first of hopefully a few Aeon's End videos. Aeon's End videos, yes. Um, because I, I've gone on record before I'd agreed to do these videos for Stronghold and said this is a fantastic game. I love this game. Um, and then, of course, I had a discussion with Stronghold and they've agreed to sponsor this video. So thank you very much to Stronghold Games uh, and Indie Boards and Cards for sponsoring this video. And hopefully I'm going to make some more because I do enjoy the game. Right. Anyway, set up for your first game is like this. I'm going to go through it step by step. Uh, and what I'm going to be doing is I am going to be explaining the rules as we go along. And I'm not just going to throw them all at you at the start. So quick overview of what the game is. This is a cooperative deck building game. It's for two to four players, but there are solo rules in the game as well. So one to four players. Each player takes on the role of a breach mage and is fighting against a nemesis. The objective of the game is to defeat the, the nemesis uh, whilst trying to survive. You actually lose the game if Gravehold, which is your home, if this is reduced to zero life, you lose the game. And if all of the players become exhausted, you also lose the game as well. That's the very, very high level overview. It's deck building with a twist. It's got something in this game which I've never seen in any other game um, and it, it's, it's one of the things that sets this game apart from other games. Anyway, right, set up for your first game. You will find in the box there comes cards in piles which have got these stop separators and the first thing you should do is take all of the cards with the A stop A on it and this is your starting market, okay? And it says do not shuffle this deck. So what you've got here is you have these jade cards so these, these are gems, okay? You can tell it's a gem because it says gem in it. I'm actually going to zoom in just for a minute on the... Let's move this around a bit. There we go. I'm going to zoom in on this. This is the starting market. So we have these cards here. I think there's seven of them. Three, four, five. Yep, the seven of these. Uh, so they are jade. We have another seven, which is the Varis Wood Amber. Three, four, five, six, seven. Remember, this is the starting setup. If you play the game properly, they will be different from this. Uh, and we also have Diamond Cluster. They are the gems, okay? So within the market, whichever game you play, there will always be three gems. These are all gems, but they will be different ones depending on which game you're playing. So these are the three gems that are in this game. The next cards are the Relic cards. And there's only five of these. So that, well, there's only five of each type. So we have the Focusing Orb and the Mage's Talisman. Okay, so five of each of those. And again, Whichever game you play, whichever card you're using, there will always be two relics and no more. The next thing, oh, the game mat. Yes, thank you very much. The game mat does not come with the core set. Uh, the game mat and the dice, they are from one of the optional extras that is included, um, not included, optional extras that you can get for the game. So yeah, the game mat is not included. Thank you for that. I did want to mention that. Uh, Nickel's here to learn. Excellent. Right, okay. Next set of cards is spells, okay? And again, there's five of each and there's four different spells. We have Spectral Echo, we have Essence Theft, we have Planar Insight, and we have Wildfire Whip, okay? And that is the end of the A deck. So they are, they are the cards in our starting market. There are more cards than this that are included in the game, but there will always be in the market three gems, two relics, and four spells. The cost to buy the card is shown in the top right, so I have them in ascending order, so two, three, four. Uh, the relics, four and five, and the spells, three, five, six, and six. Okay, that's the market set up. That is the stop A deck done. We'll come back to that later on. Next is the stop B deck. Now, at this point, each of the players should choose a character, uh, which is a breach mage. 
There are multiple ones included in the game. I have chosen these two. I've chosen Edelheim and I've chosen Mist. You assign a player number to each character. So Edelheim is player number one. Mist is player number two. I'm going to zoom in on Edelheim just so we see what's going on. Uh, here we go. Right, so we're going to zoom in on Edelheim. There we go. So we've got the dice, which, as I say, are not included in the game. The game comes with these life counters, uh, which are perfectly usable, but I'm going to use the dice today. They are from uh, one of the add-on packs. So we've got a player number. Then what we have is we have these breaches at the top. And if you look very carefully at the top of the character, it tells you the current, uh, the starting status of each of the breaches. So you can see here, breach number one is open. So we have that there. In fact, breach number one is always open. Breach number two for this mage starts off closed with the yellow bit on the left hand side. You can just see that there. So that goes there. Breach three is on the right hand side, the yellow bit, and breach four, the yellow bit is on the bottom. Okay, so that's the starting position of the four breaches. The next thing is the stop B deck actually includes all of the starting cards for each of the mages. Now, I have already taken out the ones for the mages that I'm not playing. So here we should have, these will be face up. Have I got the right ones? Uh, no, these are the ones for Mist. Right, these are the 10 cards for Edelheim, okay? And the way this works is you'll see on here, it says your starting hand is one Amethyst Shard, two Crystals and two Sparks. So that is two Sparks, two Crystals and an Amethyst Shard. Now you'll notice straight away, uh, this is a gem, this is a gem, these are spells. These cards fall into the same categories as the cards in the market, gems, relics and spells. The other cards are your deck and it says here starting deck, five crystals. So that's these five cards here. They just go face down as my deck. Okay, that's that character. Next we have Mist. So these are the 10 starting cards for Mist and it says the starting hand is one garnet shard, three crystal and one spark. So that is a Garnet Shard, three Crystals and one Spark. So you've probably noticed by now we have Crystals and Sparks for both characters. They are uh, generic cards that all characters are going to start with. But the Garnet Shard is special. The Garnet Shard is Mist's special card. Only Mist can ever have this card. And Edelheim's card was the Amethyst Shard. Now, Mist is slightly different in that her starting deck is not just five Crystals. What it is, is it's three Crystals and two Sparks. Now, the order is important here. The three crystals go on top of the deck and then the two sparks go at the bottom. So these are the two sparks and then the three crystals. That is the deck in that order and that is going to be important. There you go. That is the character setup. If you were playing with uh, four characters, you would do that for all four characters. Next, we have the C deck. Okay, now the C deck I have sleeved and that is because when you're playing this game normally, um, not the fixed setup that we're doing today, is that there would be some method of randomly creating this deck and randomly shuffling the cards. That's why I've got them sleeved. For your first game, however, it does say, oop, don't mess the cards up, <laughs> which I've just done. Um, do not shuffle this deck. So this is for your first game. The top six are the strike deck. Now I'm going to zoom in on, where shall I zoom in on? Let's zoom in on up here. It could floating pool on the table. Yeah, that's me. So here we go. Right, this is the, the deck and the top six cards make up what's called the strike deck. Now again, you would normally shuffle these cards, uh, but for this one we're not. You only use the strike deck when you're playing with Rageborn. Rageborn is the starting nemesis that we're going to be fighting against for this learning scenario. There are multiple ones included in the game, all of which require different strategies in order to defeat them. So that goes there. The rest of the cards I am just going to put here on the nemesis deck, but I will let you know that there are tiered cards in here. The first lot of cards are all tier one, then there's tier two, then there is tier three. And as I say, when you play a full game, there's a whole load of setup rules to create tier one, tier two, tier three. Some of the cards in here are specific for Rageborn, and some of the cards in here are basic ones that you will find against any of the nemesis. Right, there you go, that goes there. Now let's have a look at Rageborn. Rageborn has 70 life. So this is the life tracker for the nemesis. Rageborn has an unleash ability that every time Rageborn unleashes, uh, it's going to get one of these fury tokens, which I have here. Okay. Um, increased difficulty, we're not going to use today, but if you do manage to defeat this and you want more of a challenge, you can play on increased difficulty. And we have some additional rules that I'll come to later on. There's also on the back, there's some nice flavor text about it. 
Um, and it basically says in setup, yeah, shuffle the strike cards together and put them there. Oh, and Rageborn gains a Fury token. Ah, right, so Rageborn has already got one Fury token during setup. I'm going to put it there. Hopefully you can see that. Yeah, there we go. Right, okay, so I think we're done with the setup. The other things that I've got is I've got the turn order card. Each player should get one of these. It's two-sided. You have the player turn on one side, the nemesis turn on the other side. It looks very small, right? But there is so much information on here. Uh, let's just zoom in and show you a bit. There you go. I don't know if you can see that or not. Um, there you go. So that is the player turn. Yeah, it's a bit too bright, isn't it? It's not focusing properly. Anyway, really good reference cards. Once you know how to play the game, you can just get away with these. Okay, and we're going to be referring to them. Right, the last thing we need to do is to create the turn order deck. This is the turn order deck. Now, the turn order deck is always six cards, no matter how many players you're playing with. In a two-player game, it is comprised of two number one cards for player number one, two number two cards, and two nemesis cards, okay? If you were playing three player, there would be one from player one, one from player two, one from player three, and also a wild card. And when that comes out, any player can take a turn. And if you're playing with four players, it would just be one, two, three, and four, and then the nemesis. Now, this is shuffled, okay? So uh, I have a sleeved copy of this off camera, but I'm using the unsleeved copy today because my sleeved copy is actually in black sleeves. There we go. Turn order deck can really hurt you sometimes. Absolutely, absolutely. And in fact, in our game that we were playing last night, yeah, well, well more, more on that later on. Okay, so that gets shuffled and that gets placed there. Right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna play and we're gonna start playing and I'll explain how it goes. Basically, what's gonna happen is we're gonna go through the turn order deck one at a time until all the cards have gone and then we shuffle it, and we put it back there and we repeat the process. Let's start. So we reveal the first card of the turn order deck and it is the Nemesis, okay. So what we do is we do the Nemesis's turn. We follow through all of the steps on here uh, with what the Nemesis does. Now the first thing that happens on, a ne on the Nemesis's turn, we resolve from oldest to newest every card which is in play, which is currently none, okay? So we'll, we'll, we'll do that later on, but nothing actually triggers here. The next thing that happens is we draw a card from here and we reveal it. Now, if I just zoom in, there we go. So we have drawn Slaughter. Now, Slaughter is an attack card. What an attack card does is it does what it says on it and then the card is discarded. And this says Unleash. And as we know from the card here, whenever it unleashes, it gets a Fury token. Gravehold suffers three damage. So this goes down to 27. Remember, if this goes to zero, we lose the game immediately. And then that card goes to the discard pile. I was going to mention these additional rules. When Rageborn strikes, resolve, uh, do the, resolve the following in order. So it hasn't struck yet. Um, and at the end of the Nemesis turn, if Rageborn has four or more Fury tokens, it strikes once. Right, so that's what we're looking for. As soon as it gets four Fury tokens, it's going to strike. There you go. That is the Nemesis turn done. Very simple. Next next card is player number two. So player number two takes a turn and on your turn you do these things as listed on the card here. The first thing that happens is you have a casting phase. Any spells that you had prepared are now cast. Turn one of the game for Mist. Mist has no spells prepared so we're going to skip past the casting phase but be aware your casting phase happens before your main phase and you have to do all of the casting before you proceed to the main phase. Now we're in the main phase and we actually have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different things that we can do. I'm not going to explain all eight. I'm going to explain some of them. This is where we basically play cards from our hand. One of the things that we can do, and let's zoom in on Mist because it's Mist's turn. Okay, so it's Mist's turn. And one of the things that we can do is we can prepare a spell. So in this game, spells aren't cast from your hand. What you have to do is you have to prep them first by playing them into a breach. And that's what we're going to do first. We're going to take this spell here, which is Spark, and we're going, to, we're going to prep it. Now, you can only prep it into an open breach or a breach that you have focused this turn. I'll come back to that in a minute, but for now, 
we're just going to put spark in here because this is an open breach. So that's prepped the spell. That will be cast at the start of Mist's next turn. The next thing we have uh, that we can do is these gems bas basically provide ether. Ether is the currency in the game which we will use to buy things from the market. So we have three crystals which very simply gain one ether. We also have a garnet shard which is to gain one ether or cast any player's prepped spell. So we could, if we wanted to right now, play the garnet shard and instead of gaining an ether, we could use it to cast spark. I'm not going to at this stage. I'm actually going to use it to buy something from the market. So the way that you buy something from the market is you basically play these cards and you don't put them on your discard pile. You kind of just put them in a holding area of cards that you've played this turn. So I'm going to just put them here for now. I have played those four cards. I have gained four ether. OK, let's have a look at the market. Here is the market. I can now buy any number of cards that I want to up to a total cost of four or more. So let's have a look. I could, if I wanted to, buy two jades or I could buy a diamond cluster or I could buy a focusing orb or I could buy a spectral echo because you don't have to spend all the money. Um, now, let's just have a look at what diamond cluster does. Gain two. If this is the second time you have played Diamond Cluster this turn, gain an additional two. So if you compare Diamond Cluster to Jade, they both gain two Ether. But Diamond Cluster, if you have more of them, that's going to really ramp up and get more stuff. The other option is that I buy Focusing Orb. I can focus any player's Breach. I think for the purpose of this demo, I am going to buy a diamond cluster. OK, now right at the start, I, I, I need to get another one. That's what we need to do. So when you buy a card, what happens is the card goes into your discard pile. Now notice Mist's discard pile is currently empty. So when you buy a card from the market, it goes to the discard pile. Quick note, remember, the cards which I have played this turn to generate the ether are not yet in my discard pile. And I am being specific on this for reasons that you'll see in a minute. That's it. That is the end of my turn. The other things that I could do on my turn all cost ether uh, and I don't actually have any more ether at this stage. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to. Are the colours OK? The colours look a little washed out on there. Let's just up that a little bit. Yeah, that looks a bit too much now. There we go. Right. OK, that'll do. Um, so, yeah, so that's the end of Mist's turn. So now what happens is all of the cards that Mist played goes to the discard pile and you choose the order in which they go and this is important. So I'm actually going to put Garnet Shard in first and then I'm going to put the three crystals. So they go to my discard pile and then what happens is we draw back up to our hand size. Hand size is five. We've got five cards left in the deck. We know exactly what cards we're getting. We have two sparks and three crystals ready for next time. Now the deck is now empty, but you do not reset your discard pile yet. You only do that when you need to draw a card. OK, so now we're going back to the turn order deck. That is Mist's first turn done. The game's going to speed up later on once I've explained all of the rules. And we have the Nemesis again. Right. So remember, when the Nemesis acts, we resolve all of the Nemesis cards. There aren't any. Then we reveal a new card from the deck and we have Bleed Static. OK, this is... There you go. Yeah, those colours definitely don't look right. Um, bleed Static. This is a power card. OK, power cards stay in play. And this says power three. So what we do is we put three power tokens on it. And every time that card triggers from now on, one of those power tokens gets removed. And once all of the power tokens have gone, the ability on it triggers. So the player with the most prepped spells will suffer two damage for each of their prepped spells. There's nothing we can do about this. It's going to happen at some point. We know it's going to happen and we need to plan for it if we can. So, yeah, one power counter will get removed on each of the next three Nemesis turns. Uh, that's it. That's the Nemesis' turn done. So we zoom out and we go for... Now, we know there are no more Nemesis cards in this deck. So we know that these three cards are all ours and you can use that to your advantage. So we have character number one. OK, so this is Edelheim. Let's have a look at Edelheim and see what he's doing. Here we go. Right, so Edelheim's special ability is 
uh, that he can gain one with his Amethyst Shard and an ally can draw a card and then discard a card in hand, okay? Now, the definition of an ally is another player but not you, okay? You are not an ally of yourself in this game. So, what are we going to do? Well, you'll notice that Edelheim has two sparks in hand. So, the casting phase, nothing happens because we haven't got any spells. Now we go into the main phase and what I'm going to do is I'm going to prep that there. Now, I mentioned earlier on, you can only prep a spell in either an open breach or a breach that has been focused this turn. So if I don't focus any of these breaches, I cannot prep this spell. Okay? Now that's not a problem. You can keep it in hand, but I want to prep this spell. So here's how you do it. And we're going to cover one of the other actions that you can do in the game, which is on the player player reference card here, it is focusing a breach. So you'll notice these breaches at the start of the game, these are all closed. They are on, they are in various states of being opened, but right now they are all closed. You can focus them or you can open them. The cost to open breach number two is three. And that, that would open it straight away. The cost to open breach number three is nine and the cost to open breach number four is 10. Instead of Instead of opening it straight away, you can focus it. Now, when you focus it, you'll notice the cost of focus is actually printed on the circle there. So the cost to focus breach number three is three. And what you would do is you would rotate it clockwise. That is a breach which I have focused this turn, which means I can put a spell in it. Okay, so you can only put a spell in a breach that you have focused this turn or one that is already open. So I've got choices here. I could focus my three breach and then put spark in it or or I could just spend this three and actually open breach number two. I think that's what I'm going to do. I don't think breach number three has any special abilities for being opened. Certain cards that you might get. Have I got any here? No, I don't. So yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I am going to play these three. So these three cards are going to get played. This generates three ether and an ally may draw a card and then discard a card in hand. I'm going to come back to that in a minute. I'm going to finish Edelheim's turn just to keep the focus on this. So I've played three ether worth of cards. Remember, these do not go to the discard pile just yet. And I am going to open closed breach number two. So the cost to open is printed at the top there. What you do is you flip it over. That breach is now opened, which means Edelheim can put the second spark in there. Okay, right. Let's go over to Mist, because Mist is now allowed to draw a card, uh, and any ally may draw a card and then discard a card in hand. Now it says may, so we don't have to do this, but we're going to do this. So Mist is about to draw a card and doesn't have any in deck. So at this point, if you don't know how to play this game and you are waiting for what's different in deck builders, is you're about to see it happen. In most deck building games, you would at this point shuffle your discard pile and create a new deck. And in this game, you do not. What you do is you simply, and this is why my cards are not sleeved, you do that. You flip your deck over and you put it, sorry, you flip your discard pile over and you put it as your new deck. Now, that's why the order of cards that you are putting into your discard pile is absolutely important because that's the order in which you're going to get them out again. So, we're now drawing a card. We've drawn our diamond cluster, which we knew we were going to draw because that's the card that we'd put in there. And now we can discard a card from hand. So I think I'm going to discard this spark. Okay, so that goes to the discard pile and that is Edelheim's turn. Almost done. Edelheim now draws the remaining five cards from his deck, which is five crystals. Okay, there we go. Right, um, in the chat, let me know, I'm just interested, how many of you in the chat know this game, have played this game and know the rules of the game and are just joining in to watch me? And how many of you are here to learn how to play the game? Just let me know, give me an idea, because I'm curious. Right, turn order deck, next card is number two, back to Mist. Let's have a look at Mist again. I'm not gonna zoom in every time moving on, but I am gonna do just for the start of the game while we're learning. Right, remember what I said that happens at the start of a player's turn is the casting phase. So here's how the casting phase works. 
If you have a spell in an open breach, you may, but you don't have to, cast it. In this case, we do want to, but there are a number of situations where you might not want to for various reasons. So we are going to cast this spell. And when it casts, it says deal one damage. We, we Currently, we only have one target, which is the nemesis itself. So we are going to deal one damage to the nemesis. This card goes to the discard pile and we drop this down to 69. There you go. We have dealt one damage of the 70 damage that we need to do. It will ramp up, trust me. If we had a spell in a closed breach that had been focused, it must be cast. So this is the thing. A spell in an open breach is may. You may cast it, but you don't have to. A spell that was in a focused breach that was closed, you must cast it. Right, now it is Mist's turn and we have five ether and we have another spark. So this is what we're going to do. The spark is going to go here and then we have five ether, three from the crystals and two for the diamond cluster. But this is not the second time that we've played diamond cluster this turn. So I'm tempted to actually buy another diamond cluster and waste one of the, or I could actually keep the crystal in hand, but I'm not going to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to buy, um, oh, I was going to buy that. Okay, I'm going to buy the Mage's Talisman because I want to show off how these relics work. Okay, so I've bought this Mage's Talisman. Um, it costs five. Let's just zoom in for you so you can see. There you go. I've bought the Mage's Talisman. It's a relic. It costs five. It goes to my discard pile. And then all of the cards which I played go to my discard pile in any order I want. So I'm going to put Diamond Cluster first, and then I'm going to put the three crystals. And then at the end of Mist's turn, we draw back up to five, which is one, two, three, four, out of cards, flip the deck over and draw one, which we know what it is. It's the spark. There you go. That is Mist's Mist's turn done. Now we're going to go to Edelheim because it's the only card left in the deck. So Edelheim. Edelheim has two sparks here. We don't have to cast these because they are in open breaches, but we're going to. So those two cards go here. And that is two damage on the Nemesis. So Rageborn goes down to 67. There we go. Uh, and then we have five Ether. Um, so we are going to play. Oh, hang on. Hang on, these cards should have gone to the discard pile earlier. Yeah, sorry, those cards should have gone to the discard pile last turn. There we go. So this turn we're playing five crystals for five ether, and we're going to buy... We're going to buy... What are we going to buy? We're going to buy... Two cards. We're going to buy a Spectral Echo, which is going to go on the deck first, and we're going to buy Jade. So the total cost of those cards is five. And then we're going to put our crystals on there. And then we flip the deck over. That goes there. And then we draw five cards. So we've got spark, amethyst shard, crystal, crystal, and a spark. Right. That is the end of the first cycle round of the turn order deck. So now what we do is we give this a shuffle. I will check the chat. Um, so Johnny on the table is here, doesn't know the game, was actually inclined to learn, here to watch. David Digby says, uh, played once, wasn't so keen. So seeing if you were wrong on first opinion. Could be that you played with the wrong rules. I'm not sure. Uh, Johan is here to watch. You can already know the game, but you already caught a rules mistake. A rules mistake that I've made or a rules mistake that you've made? If it's a rules mistake I've made, please let me know in the chat. Or, <laughs> or is it a rules mistake that you've made? Um, Mark is here to learn and see. Uh, Hexy Beast. Is saying you need, really need to get that second breach open to get the damage output that you need. Yeah. Okay. So it's about 50 50. Cool. Uh, Randy's here as well. Uh, Kickstarted Aeon's End and Aeon's End War Eternal. Excellent. Ah, Johan saying a mistake that you've made. Excellent. I, I actually quite like that. I like the fact that, you know, I'll do a video. Somebody who already knows how to play the game watches the video, but then finds that they were making the mistake. Let me know. Oh, with the power cards. Right. Okay. We'll talk later. Let me know what mistake you made. Right, we've shuffled the turn order deck and off we go for the second time round. It is the Nemesis first. So we activate all of these cards in order from left to right, which is simply we remove this power token and then we get another card. 
Right, now I'm going to zoom in because we have our first minion. Right, minions are creatures which are going to, we're going to be fighting against that come into play and they stay on this row here. And this here is how much health it's got. So we're going to set its health to five. And it has a persistent ability. So from now on, every time this card triggers, Gravehold is going to suffer damage equal to this minion's current life. And then this minion suffers one damage. So this is a Haze Spewer that is going to start really damaging Gravehold. We can get rid of it by dealing it damage. Uh, that's it. That, that is the Nemesis' turn done. So next is player number two, which is Mist. Right, so Mist may cast this spark at the start, and Mist is going to, so we're going to cast the spark. Now we have a choice here. We can either deal one damage to the Nemesis, or we can deal one damage to the Haze Spewer. Now, later on in the game, you probably want to be focusing on the Nemesis, but at the start of the game, if we don't get this under control, it's going to deal a lot of damage to Gravehold. So we're going to deal the damage to the Haze Spewer. So that's down to four. Right, now, what are we going to do on our main phase? We are going to play, we're going to prep that into here, and then we're going to play these cards here. Now, we could... Ooh, yeah, let's do this. We are going to play our Garnet Shard. Now, our Garnet Shard, if you remember, says, gain one ether or cast any player's prepped spell. And I think because we want to get this down as early as possible... I think that's what we're going to do. We are going to play the Garnet Shard and we are going to cast this spell now, which deals another damage to the Haze Spewer. Now we only have three more ether, but I'm going to use that three ether to buy a Spectral Echo. Okay, so that's going to go to the discard pile. Then all of these cards go to my discard pile in any order I want. So I'm going to put the best one at the bottom, which will then become the top. And then we draw five cards. Still one card left in our deck. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, there we go. That is Mist Go done. Next is player number one, which is Edelheim. Edelheim doesn't have any spells prepped, so there is no casting to go on. But we do have two sparks that we're going to put in here ready for next time. And then we have, we have an Amethyst Shard and two Crystals. So I'm going to play these, which is three. And then an ally, an ally may draw a card and then discard a card. So we're going to. We're going to draw a card and then may discard a card. Hmm. Well, I'm definitely not going to discard that. I'm not going to discard that. I'm going to discard this crystal, actually, because the next thing I want to buy with mist costs four. And there's four. So we're all good. Right. And then Edelheim draws five cards. Two, three, four, five. Now, we haven't seen all of the actions yet. There are more actions about gaining charges and stuff like that that we're going to see later on. I am going to do them uh, just so you see the full thing. Right, next is the Nemesis. So we're going to take another card from here, another counter from here. So that's going to trigger soon. And then the Haze Spewer, its persistent ability triggers, which is Gravehold takes three damage. Three. And then the Haze Spewer suffers one damage. And then we get a new card. So we have Woven Sky, which is a power card. Uh, it's a slightly different power card than before. So I'm going to zoom in just to show you why. So I'm just going to try and do something with this colour because it looks really blurry for me. Let me know if it's blurry for you, but it looks very blurry for me. How's, how's that? Is that any better? I don't know. Just, just doesn't seem that clear. Um, yeah, let me know if that, if that is any better. Uh, it is digital zoom rather than uh, rather than manual zoom, so it could be why. Anyway, Woven Sky is power two, which means we put two counters on it. But this is a different type of power card because we can get rid of it. And this is one of the actions that you can do on your turn on the player on the player aid here. Resolve a to discard effect. So any player when it's their turn can discard this card by following the instructions here. So we can discard three cards in hand, which is of course awful. But if we don't, this is going to stay around and in two Nemesis turns time, it's going to trigger and a player is going to take four damage. OK. There we go. Right. That is the Nemesis's turn done. 
Next up, we have player number one. So it's Edelheim again. Now this is good because Edelheim is going to cast these two sparks and going to get rid of this haze spewer. So that haze spewer is gone. That goes to the discard pile. These cards slide down. That is the casting phase done. Oh, and I did it again, didn't I? I forgot to put these cards. <laughs> they should be there. Um, right, now we have a new card. It is a Spectral Echo, which we bought last turn. It's a spell, so we can't cast it directly, but that's going to go in there. And then we have one, two, three, four, five. We have five Ether to spend. So what are we going to buy? We could buy another Spectral Echo and a Jade. We could buy a Mage's Talisman. Um, but I think we're going to do something different. I'm going to buy, because I want to try and show off as many of these cards as possible. So I'm going to buy an, this, this spell, Essence Theft. Okay, so that goes, that goes there. Let's just zoom in on Edelheim so you can see what he's done. So Edelheim has prepped spect Spectral Echo into this breach here um, and then has bought Essence Theft, which is a spell that's going to deal three damage. Right, cards go to the discard pile. We get five new cards. We haven't got five cards in the deck, so we do get those two. Flip the deck over, put it there, and draw another three. One, two, three. Okay, now, these cards aren't great. We're just drawing our starting cards. I want to try and get rid of these at some point so that we get more of our good cards. We can do that later on. And finally, we have player number two, which is Mist. So Mist doesn't have any prep spells, so nothing happens there. But we now have a relic. So we are going to see our first relic being played. Eh, it looks a bit dark now. Yeah, it's going to have to be a bit, little bit blurry. There you go. Yeah, the zoom loses exposure. Yeah, because it's digital zoom and not, um, not manual zoom. Right, anyway. Mist has got this card in hand, which we bought earlier on. So relics. Here's how relics work. You play them. They do what they say on them and then they go to your discard pile. So they're a little bit like gems, but gems generally ge generate ether, which allows you to buy more stuff, whereas relics actually have a powerful effect. So this relic, when I play it, says gain one charge, and then any ally also gains one charge. So let's talk about charges. You'll notice on each player sheet, there is these boxes here, and all the characters are different. Some of them have five boxes, some of them have six, I believe. And these are the charge counters. And we're gaining a charge is you put a counter on there. Now you can actually gain a charge as an action by spending two ether. And there's no limit to how many charges you can gain on your turn. What you're doing is you're charging up your special ability. So each character has a special ability. It can only be used once it's fully charged. So it's a really powerful ability. This one will need five charges. And then um, Mist can do Divine Augury. Uh, any ally can draw four cards. So yeah, we've started to charge that up. We're then going to prep the spark into there. And we're going to play these four. So that's one, two, three, four. And we're going to buy another diamond cluster. So the diamond cluster goes there. And then these cards go to our discard pile in the order of our choosing. And see, see here one of the key things about this game, which sets it apart from other deck building games. The diamond cluster, as we saw earlier on, is good when you play more than one of them on the same turn. And in normal deck builders, you would be shuffling your discard pile and it would actually be luck based whether you manage to get the two cards out at the same time or not. In this game, you can actually engineer it. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to put the two diamond clusters together, which means they are going to come out together. One of the reasons why this game is great. There we go. That is that done. We then flip the deck over. We get five. One, two, three, four, five. That goes there. We have two sparks, spectral echo, garnet shard, and a crystal. Right, we're ready. That is the second time round the deck. So, off we go. I'm going to shuffle this. And I'll check the chat. Enough shuffling. Enough shuffling. Right, here we go. Let's see who's going to go first in what is effectively round three. But there aren't really any rounds in this game. Player number one. So it is back to Edelheim again. So Edelheim has Spectral Echo. Let's zoom in on Edelheim. So Spectral Echo says, uh, deal two damage when you cast it. I'm actually going to try and 
There you go. Can you see that? It might not focus because it's not right in the centre of the camera. Anyway, Spectral Echo uh, deals two damage and may destroy a card in hand. Now, destroy is not a word that we've come across yet in this game, but that's going to go to the discard pile. We're going to deal two damage. There's only one thing that we can deal the damage to at the moment, which is the Nemesis. So we're going to deal two damage to the Nemesis. Now, destroy means remove from the game. And if you are not used to deck building games, you might think, well, why would I want to destroy a card from the game? If you're used to deck building games, you will know exactly why. We want to get rid of the weak cards so that when our deck cycles round, we get the better cards more often. So we're now going to destroy one of these cards in our hand. Which one do we want to destroy? I think, based on what I'm planning to do this turn, now, what was I planning to do this turn? This is what I need to think. If I was planning on focusing another breach, I need to have three ether, which means I need to destroy a spark. Um, or I could destroy one of the crystals, which means I've only got two ether this turn, which is enough to get a charge. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. We're going to destroy this crystal. So this crystal is actually gone from the game. And then it is our go. So, um, yeah, it's our main phase. So we're going to prep that. We're going to prep that. We're going to play these two um, for two ether, and we're going to use it to gain a charge. Now, Idleheim's special ability is, when it's fully charged, um, during the Nemesis draw phase, when a Nemesis attack or power card is drawn, but before it's revealed, discard it. Super useful. And also, when I play Amethyst Shard, an ally may draw a card and then discard a card. So that is what Misty's going to do. Misty's going to draw a card. We've got a crystal. Now, which card are we going to discard? We're probably going to discard one of these spells because Mist only has one breach to play spells into and has currently got three spells in hand. So we're going to discard that. Remember, this is discard, not destroy. Right, Edelheim, Edel, Edelheim's turn is done. Those cards go to the discard pile and we get five new cards. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. So we have three crystals, a jade and an essence theft. Nice. Yeah, we're going to have a good turn next turn. Right, next is play number two, which is missed. So we've been quite lucky this round. We're The players are getting to go before the nemesis. Right, so Mist must cast, sorry, may cast this, but is going to choose to do so. So that's one damage, which we're going to do on the Nemesis. Uh, then we go into the main phase. Now, here's the thing. We have this Woven Sky in play. Kind of don't want it to go off. And although it's got two power counters on, we've got to be aware that there are four cards left in the turn order deck. If the two Nemesis cards come out next, that Woven Sky is going to trigger before we get to do anything about it. So I think I don't like this card. So I think we're going to we're going to try and get rid of it. Well, we don't try. We are going to get rid of it. So to get rid of it, we have to discard three cards from hand. So I think this is what we're going to do. Yeah. We are just going to discard this card, this card, and this card. Ooh. That leaves us with that, which is actually not doing anything. But that's fine. I'm going, okay, I'm going to discard these three cards, and you can discard them in whatever order you want. So we discarded three cards from hand. That power card has gone. It didn't have any effect on us because we got rid of it. Okay, now, what do we want to do here? I'm going to prep Spectral Echo. Now, I've got this card in hand, and I'm going to, I'm going to do something now to explain another rule of the game, which, again, is unlike other deck builders. At the end of a player's turn, they are not allowed to voluntarily discard cards from their hand. Okay? If they've got a card in hand that they can't use, they, they have to keep it, and then they just draw back up to their hand size. However, Garnet Shard is a gem that can gain ether. So you are allowed to play it, gain one ether, and then just not spend it. But if this was a spell, I would be stuck with it. So the question is, do I want to keep Garnet Shard in hand? 
and I'm not sure I do. I mean, I, I could actually play it to allow Edelheim to cast Spark now, but that's not going to help us. If there was an enemy here, if there was a minion here with one life, I would be totally doing that right now. Um, but we don't need to. So I think, I think I'm going to play it, um, but I'm not actually going to use it to cast a spell. No, because we don't need to. I'm going to use it to gain the ether and then not spend the ether. There you go. And I think that's fine. Right. It is the end of Mist's turn. So we draw five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Now we've got our Mage's Talisman again. Remember, by getting rid of, you know, not good cards from our, our deck, we can get the good cards more often. Right. Next up is player number one. Wow. We have been quite lucky this turn, this round. Player number one is Edelheim. So we have these two sparks. They are going to both go off. Again, we don't have to, but we are going to. So they go there. And that's two damage to the Nemesis. There you go. If you think the Nemesis is easy, remember, this is the first sort of tutorial scenario in the game. And we are still on the tier one cards. OK, things are going to speed up later on. Um, just thinking, is there something that I didn't do? Because normally... The size of this deck is based on the number of breach mages that you're playing with. But for the tutorial, it, it isn't done like that. It is just a fixed deck. Right. I just wanted to check that. Um, so, Edelheim's turn. The spells have been cast. We are going to prep Essence Theft, which is going to be awesome when that goes off. And then we're going to play one, two, three, four. We're going to play these. And we're going to play these for five, five ether. And I think we're going to buy... Another Essence Theft. Is that what we're going to buy? Ooh. Um, the thing is, the, prob the, the problem is, if I, if, I, if I keep buying these spells, the chance of me getting enough Ether in hand to buy the big spells is actually not going to be a lot. So... I think we might have a switch and we might actually buy some crystals. But we do need to be destroying cards, which is Spectral Echo. So I'm going to buy a Spectral Echo for three and a Jade for two. That's the five that I'm going to spend. Normally I'd be tempted to go for, you know, if I had five, I'd buy something for five. But I think in this particular setup, that's what I'm going to do. And we'll see how it works. Uh, Randy is saying Edelheim's ability is pretty nice. Yes, it is. Very nice. Right. We're going to get some cards. One, two. Oh, hang on. I need to put these in. Edelheim keeps forgetting to discard his cards. Naughty Edelheim. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. Right. Next up is the Nemesis. So one card goes off, uh, one power counter goes off here, and this power now triggers. So this it says, the player with the most prepped spells suffers two damage for each of their prepped spells. Now, thankfully, both players only have one spell at the moment. It's tied, so it's up to the players. Um, and Edelheim is going to be brave, and Edelheim says, don't worry, Mist, I will take the damage. So there we go. Edelheim is down to eight life. If a player ever goes down to zero life, they become exhausted. If that happens, and, and exhaustion in this game, again, is handled differently from other games, I'll explain what happens when we get there. If it doesn't happen, I'll explain at the end of the video. That card now gets discarded, and we get a new card. And we have Agony Field. It's another power card. Now, it's got two power counters on it, and it has a discard ability. Uh, destroy a card in hand that costs two ether or more. But if we don't get rid of it, then after two activations, it unleashes and any player discards three card in hand, three cards in hand, and then draws one card. So again, we don't want it to go off, but destroying a card in hand that costs two? Ah, we will see. Right, next up is, for a two-player game, you're supposed to remove the top five cards from the pre-made Nemesis deck. Right, okay. Yeah, I possibly should have done that. Oh, it does say here. Right, apologies for that. I should have done that. It does say clearly here, and I'd forgotten to do it. If you're playing a two-player game 
Remove the top five cards of the Nemesis deck and return them to the box. Right, apologies, made a mistake. Thank you very much, Chris. So the, these top five cards that have happened shouldn't have happened. I am, though, going to remove the next five cards. Okay, that's kind of distorted things a, get, a bit, but that's what we're going to do. There you go. Thank you very much, Chris. I thought, I thought I'd done something wrong. I had this funny feeling that I'd missed something. And it is there in a red box, two or three player game. So yes, thank you very much, Chris. Right, so we, we've lost five cards of that deck, which means we're closer to getting to the, uh, the tier two cards, which are more powerful. Right, where are we up to? Uh, what have I done? What was I doing? Somebody remind me. My short term memory is terrible. Have we just done player two? Or are we just about to do player two? I think we're just about to do player two. Yeah, I think we just did the nemesis and we did that. Yeah, so I think it is now player two. Yeah. Check they are all level one. They are all level one. So all the cards we got rid of were level one. We're tier one, we're fine. Right, so I think it's missed turn. And we have this spell, which we are going to cast. Again, we don't have to, because it's in an open breach, but we are totally going to cast it, because it deals two damage, and it allows us to destroy a card. Uh, is it down to 50 already? Surely not. No, 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 it's down to 60. Yeah, we've only done it 10 damage. Um, so, Mist may destroy a card in hand. And remember, destroy is out of the game. So we're going to get rid of one of these crystals. There you go. Start getting rid of the old cards. And now, Mist has two diamond clusters together. So, we play the first diamond cluster, which gains two ether. We then play the second diamond cluster, which gains two. But it says, if this is the second time you have played diamond cluster this turn, gain an additional two. So, Mist now has six ether. And now we can buy one of the big cards. Or... We can play the crystal for seven ether. Oh, it's starting to get nice now, isn't it? Um, what do we want to do? Do we want to go with seven? Do we want to start focusing some more breaches? I think what we're going to do is we're going to buy, we're going to use the seven. We're going to buy a mage's talisman. We're going to put it there and we're going to buy some jade. And we're going to put that there. Okay, there's the seven spent. Now we have this Mage's Talisman, uh, which we play. In fact, I think I got this wrong earlier. I think relics don't go to the discard pile when you play them. So apologies for that. Relics actually go to your played area and then you discard them at the end of your turn with everything else. So this is gain one charge and then an ally gains a charge. There we go. So we're charging up. Um, that is the end of Mist's turn. So these cards can go to our discard pile in whatever order we want. So that's going to go there. The two diamond clusters are going to go together, obviously. That's going to go there. And then we get five cards. Yeah, the power really does ramp up in this game. So one, two, three, four, five. Oh, okay. He says the power ramps up and then we draw just a whole bunch of normal starting cards, which we are, are rubbish and we need to get rid of those as soon as we can. Right. Next is the Nemesis. We knew it was the Nemesis because that was the last card in the deck. We remove a power counter from here and we get a new card. And it is uh, an attack card, Unrelenting Ire, Unleash, which is one of those tokens. If there are two Nemesis turn order cards in the turn order discard pile, which there are, then unleash two additional times. OK, so we get that and we get that. Now, remember, at the end of the Nemesis turn, if there are four or more Furious tokens, it strikes. So we're now seeing the special rules for this particular Nemesis. Uh, let's just zoom in. OK, so here we go. When Rageborn Strike, resolve the following in order. Draw a card from the Strike deck and resolve it. <laughs> Uh, shuffle that card back into the strike deck and then Rageborn loses three Fury tokens. Okay, so we have a strike. The player with the lowest life suffers two damage. Okay, now Edelheim is on the lowest life, so Edelheim takes another two damage. He's down to six. Okay, and then that card gets shuffled back into the strike deck and then we lose three Fury tokens. There you go. Okay, so those strike cards are nasty. 
But there you go. That is the nemesis that turned on. That's the end of the third cycle round the cards. How are we doing? For those people who are experienced with this game, are we doing okay? Is the tutorial easy? Um, or is it actually quite challenging? We will find out. It does say at the end, it does say, you know, don't worry if you found this too easy, it gets harder later on. Okay, first card of round four is number two. It is Mist. So Mist only has basic starting cards, so we just we need to get rid of these as soon as we can. Um, now I think what I think what Mist is going to do is because Mist only has two crystals, we're going to use those to focus this breach. So when you focus a breach, you rotate it 90 degrees clockwise, and you just remember that this breach has been focused this turn, and we're going to put a spell in it. And then we're going to put a spell in there. Now we can't do anything with this spell. Remember what I said, if you've got a spell in hand and you can't do anything with it, you've got to keep it. And that's unfortunate because we don't really want to. We want the good cards that are in here. But because we've nowhere to play it, uh, we've got to keep it in hand. That is missed turn done and now we only draw four cards because you draw up to your hand size. Right, okay, yeah, we've got some rubbishy cards here that we need to get rid of. Next up is... Player one, Edelheim. Okay, we have a spell, Essence Theft. Deal three damage, and we then disc, we can, if we want to, discard a card in hand. If we do, any player gains one life. We're totally doing that. So it's three damage. So the Nemesis goes down to 57. There you go. Uh, and then we may discard a card in hand. If we do, any player gains one life. So we're gonna discard a crystal and Edelheim's going to heal himself to seven. Right. Now, we have uh, Spectral Echo, which we're going to prep into there. We then play these three cards for three ether. Amethyst Shard allows Mist to draw a card. Nice. And then discard a card. So we're going to discard... We're going to discard a crystal. Okay. Um, and then we've got three ether. So what are we going to do with that three ether? Um, do we want to buy another spectral echo? Do we want to focus a breach? Do we want to buy a charge? Hmm. I think just so we see it, I'm going to buy this. This is the Viris Wood Amber. This is a special card because what it does is it breaks the rules of the game, like a lot of the cards do. So it says. When you gain this, you may place it on top of your deck. And when we play it, we get two. So basically, we put it there, and it means we're definitely going to get it next turn. Right, that is the end of Edelheim's turn. These cards go to the discard pile. And we get, oh look, it's a Vriswood Amber. Surprise, surprise. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, right, next up is is Edelheim again. You get this sometimes, but we do know that Edelheim is not going to be, take, not going to be taking any more turns uh, in this cycle of turn order cards. So we have a Spectral Echo, which we're going to cast. Again, two damage, down to 55, and may destroy a card in hand. So we're totally destroying this. This is a spark. We're going to destroy it. Gone. Out of the game. Now we have um, a Spectral Echo, which we're going to put in there. We have four ether. Now, what do we want to do with the four ether? Do we want to buy something? Do we want to gain some charges? Uh, do we want to focus a breach? Oh, it's a good question. It is a good question. I'm going to buy for four, I'm going to buy a focusing orb. So this is the other type of relic, which is in this particular setup. Uh, so we've not seen this or not. Is it going to work up there if I fo if I do that? Will it focus? I'm trying to get the camera to focus on that. Is it going to do it? No, it's not doing it. Yeah, it's a bit of a pain. I thought it would. Anyway, we bought a focusing orb. That goes to my discard pile. Uh, we're then going to prep the spark into there, and then we're going to discard these cards in that order, and then we're going to draw five. One, two three, four. One card left, so we flip this deck over, take the top card, and it's the Essence Theft again. Got some nice spells in here. 
Okay, now the nemesis is going to be acting at some point. And here we go. So this goes. Um, ah, we should have got rid of this. Ah, I'd forgotten about that. Now it's my bad. We could have got rid of this by destroying a card in hand. Oh dear. Yes. So it unleashes. Completely forgot about that. Uh, then any player discards three cards in hand and draws one card. Actually, this is not too bad. So Edelheim's going to do it because he's got these three cards in hand and doesn't really want them because they're old, they're, they're starting cards. So we'll discard those and get one. Yeah, okay. Not too bad. Okay. And then we draw a new card and we get... Uh, now, we are now into the tier two cards. This is a two power card. And when it goes off, it unleashes any player suffers a damage. And then that player suffers one additional damage for each Fury token Rageborn has. To discard it, we need to spend seven ether. Wow. Wow. Seven ether is a lot. That's probably not going to happen. So somebody is going to be taking a lot of damage. Yeah, that's worrying. That is a lot of damage. Right, next up is play number two, which is Mist, and then we know it's the Nemesis next. So Mist has got two sparks. Now at the moment, this is an interesting one, because a lot of the other Nemesis that I fought against have lots of minions. This one doesn't seem to have that many minions. It's got lots of power cards and lots of attack cards. Every Nemesis you play against will play differently and require different strategies uh, and different cards in the market. We'll come back to that later on. Two damage to the nemesis. 53 life. We're doing okay. Now, um, oh, they should have been, yeah, those should have been there. Um, we're going to play the Mage's Talisman. So uh, Mist gains a charge and an ally gains a charge. This is starting to go look nice now. Uh, we're then going to put Spectral Echo into there. Um, do we want to do this? Ooh, so now we could actually do this. Yeah, let's do it. We're going to play Garnet Shard to cast any player's prep spell. So I could, I could, Mist could actually cast this. But we're not going to. Mist is going to cast her own card. So that's going to go there. We're going to cast this, which is two damage and destroy a card in hand. We're going to destroy a crystal. Two damage, down to 51. You can see if this was um if I was playing this game with two people, you would be working together, you'd be discussing what to do. But as you can see, it plays perfectly well solo as well. And now that we have this breach open, we can put that in there. Done. That is Mist's turn over. Those cards are gonna go there, and we're gonna draw five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, next up is the Nemesis. Might want to start charging up Edelheim's special ability now that we are in tier two Nemesis cards. Yes. I was thinking of doing that. It is the Nemesis's go. That disappears and we get a new card and it is Awaken. It is an attack card. So unleash twice. One, two. And Gravehold suffers three damage down to 21. Oh, or place the most recently discarded minion card back into the Nemesis discard pile. Sorry, place the most recently discarded minion card in the Nemesis discard pile back into play. Actually, yes, let's do that instead. So instead of unleashing twice, what we're going to do is we're going to get the haze spewer out and we're going to put that back into play because I think we're going to easily be able to kill it, he says. This is totally going to backfire, isn't it? Okay, there you go. Nemesis's turn. Nemesis's turn is over. Mist might be able to generate the seven needed. Actually, yes. Close to one, two, three. Yeah, we can. We can actually do it. So this is going to be, this is where the look factor in the game comes in. If Mist takes a turn before the Nemesis, we are going to be able to get rid of that card. Here we go. There is a 50-50 chance. And it is player number one. It's Edelheim. Right, so we have Spectral Echo, two damage. We're going to deal two damage to the Haze Spewer. 
and can destroy a card in hand. So we're going to discard, uh, sorry, we're going to destroy a crystal. Then the spark goes off, which is another one damage. Uh, then we're going to put essence theft into there. And then we're going to spend this two to just gain a charge rather than buying something for the market. So it's two ether to buy a charge. Done. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, next up, here we go. Are we lucky? We are. We got it. So play number two. So yeah, I think we get rid of that. I think good call. First of all, the spark goes off. One damage. We're going to deal it to the hay spewer. Again, we could have dealt it to the nemesis if we want to. Then diamond cluster for two. Another diamond cluster for four. Plus another one is seven. That's the seven ether. We can discard this power card without it having any effect on us. Nice. Thank you for the tip. Uh, Mark, yeah, thank you for the tip. We have a Mage's Talisman, which is one charge for Mist, one charge for Edelheim. Edelheim's ability is now fully charged up, so we can use that in any Nemesis turn. When a card comes out, an attack card or a power card, if we don't want it, we can just get rid of it. We then have this, which is to gain two Ether, uh, which we will use to gain a charge on there, and then I think we're going to use it. Yeah, we're going to use this ability. So we remove all of the charge counters and an ally can draw four cards. So here you go, Mr. Edelheim. One, two, three, four. Hey, you like that? How do you like them apples? Lots and lots of cards, which you can't see because I'm in the way. If I move out the way there, you can see the cards. Um, Oh, I'm sort of disappearing into the chat. <laughs> there we go. Right. Um, that is Mist's turn done. Mist now draws five cards. It's interesting because Mist hasn't opened any other breaches yet. And um, Jonathan was saying earlier on in the chat, you really want to do that. Um, the relief when the turn order works in your favour. Yes. <laughs> yeah. As I say, this is, the, this is the lucky part of the game where you can be lucky or not with the order in which they're going to come out. Oh, look at that, rubbish cards. I'll try and get rid of those. Oh, hang on. No, no, that's fine. I, I forgot to discard these first. I'm getting too excited. So that's going to go there, that's going to go there, that's going to go there, and those would be, those would be on the bottom. There you go. Right, next up is, yes, the Nemesis. So the haste spewer deals one damage to Gravehold and then dies. There you go. I've played some games against some nemesis where you end up with three or four cards here and it's actually really hard to keep on top of it. Um, yeah, right. Okay. And then we get a new card. Uh, right. We have another minion. Oh, I was saying about minions. This has got 11 health. This is a big one. Um, its persistent ability is Gravehold suffers two damage. So if we don't get rid of that in 11 turns time or 12 turns time, we're, we're dead. And this is the thing we need to work out. Are we going to be able to win? So 12 turns time for the Nemesis player, which is six times through the deck. Are we going to win before we're six times through the deck? Possibly not because other cards are going to come out. So I think we need to deal with that. But the problem is... You can lose this game. If you focus too much on getting rid of these cards in play and not on the Nemesis itself, that can backfire. Um, it's it's finding the balance. Right. Next turn is the Nemesis again. Well, it's going to happen. Uh, so Gravehold suffers two damage, down to 21, and then we get a new card. Now, Edelheim's ability, you might think, why didn't we get rid of this? But Edelheim's ability is only for attack or power cards, not for minions. Can't be used on minions. Right. It is Lay Waste. It is an attack card. We can, if we want to, blow all of our charges to get rid of this card. If we don't, it unleashes twice and somebody takes two damage. I... I, I don't know. Oh. The reason what I'm thinking about is I'm thinking maybe we should wait. Maybe we should save these charges because it's taken us the whole game to get them for a more dangerous card. 
But the other part of me is thinking, I've got loads of cards in hand. I can generate loads of ether and get lo loads of these charges back. So we're going we're gonna to spend all of these charges to discard that card with no effect. There you go. Right, next. Uh, unleashes causes attack. Yes, it would do. Yeah, if I, if I allowed it to unleash twice, that would cause a strike. Yeah, so I didn't want to do that. We got rid of it. Right, next up is play number two. It is Mist. Now, Mist is having a very simple turn because all we've got is basic cards in hand. So we can't really do much. So I am going to put Spark into there. We are then going to spend three Ether to focus this Breach. And because we focused it, we can put a spell in it. Those cards go there. We get five new cards. Hopefully these cards are going to be better. Yes, they are. All of these. Oh, nice. Very nice. Right. Next up is Edelheim. Edelheim with his mighty hand of cards. Let's just add these up because we have lots of stuff here. Yeah, this is a lot of ether. Well, first of all, we have, um, we have the spell casting phase or the casting phase. So Essence Theft goes off deals three damage. I think we are going to deal it to this. So we're going to knock this down to eight. I don't like this sticking around. So that's going to go down to eight and can discard a card in hand so that any player gains one life. So we're going to discard a crystal so that it can heal back to eight. There we go. Um, right, now we're going to play this. This is a relic. This relic focuses any player's breach or we can destroy it to give Gravehold three life. At this stage, I don't want to destroy it, so we're just going to play it, and we're going to focus this four breach. Remember, focusing it means rotating it 90 degrees to the right. If you were to focus a breach that's already fully focused, it opens. And any spell that is cast in from an open four breach gains an extra one damage, and that's what we're going to try and do. Right, we now have, uh, we can put a Spectral Echo in here. Doesn't really matter which one I put it in. Um, we then have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight Ether. Ooh, so many choices. So many choices. Um, we're going to gain Planar Insight, which costs six. And we're going to spend two on a charge. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Next, that's going to go there. See, I'm now putting these in a particular order in my discard pile. Oh, Amethyst Shard, Mist could have drawn a card and then discard one. I'll do that. I'll do that now. Uh, that's going to go next. Then that one, then that one, then those three. There you go. That is Edelheim's turn done. Uh, Paul is saying it appears to be harder at two than three. Not sure. The thing is with two players is each player is getting two turns every cycle around the card. Um, so individually, their decks are going to get more powerful. One, two, three, four, five. Right, so Mist's special card. Uh, draw one and discard one. It's going to be that one. It's discard, not destroy. Right, okay, that is the fourth cycle round the turn order deck, I believe. How are we doing? Hope you're enjoying and enjoying it. What time are we on? We are on quarter past six. Well, I thought this was going to be a 45 minute video. So Vicky's downstairs about to cook enchiladas. And I said, oh, don't worry, it'll be 45 minutes. Remember, this is a learning game. I am talking through my decisions slowly as I play. Normally, a game of this is about 45 minutes to an hour. Certainly from my experience. Um, and I'm hoping that Kevin Riley is actually in the chat. The designer of the game said he'd, uh, tr said he'd try and pop in. I don't know if that's triple L. Is that you, Kevin? It might be you. Uh, if it is, hello. Thank you very much for designing an amazing game. Right, player number two. It is missed. We have these two sparks, which we are going to cast, and we are going to cast them on this needle more to try and get rid of this, because it's nasty. Right, now, here we go. Check this out. Mage's Talisman. Charge on Mist. Charge on Edelheim. Another Mage's Talisman. Another charge here and another charge here. Ch gaining these charges is really good.
But you can play some games where you don't actually gain any charges. It's just one of the one of the things that you can do. Um, Spectral Echo is prepared. Now we have. Ooh. I think we're going to play these for three ether to buy another Spectral Echo. Yes, we're going to buy another Spectral Echo. That is the end of Mist's, Mist's turn. We're going to put the two Mages Talismans in the first, then that, then that. Nice. One, two, three. Flip the discard pile over. Four, five. Right. Look at that. Loads of ether next turn. Um, ah, Triple L is Linda. Ah, yes, LLL. Right. No problem. Can you be pretend to be Kevin? No, it's fine. Thank you for joining in, Linda. Um, okay, player number one, it's Edelheim. So we have a Spectral Echo, which is going to go off. We're using that a lot in this game because I've decided I really like this card. Um, two damage, which we're going to put on this one. And can destroy a card in hand. Oh, I need to be very careful that I don't destroy something that I want. I'm going to destroy this Spark because we don't want that now. Edelheim's deck is definitely starting to thin out a bit with uh, getting rid of the bad cards. I say bad cards, the starting cards. Right, we're then going to put Essence Theft into there, Spectral Echo into there, and then we're going to spend this three ether. Hmm. We're probably just going to charge, actually, I think. Yeah, I'm going to keep this crystal in hand, and I'm going to play this Jade for two ether, which I'm going to gain a charge. The reason I'm doing that, and I wouldn't normally do this, because crystals are starting cards, I don't want them in my deck. If I can play them and just not use them and get rid of them, I would. But these cards that I've got here are going to require me. Um, oh, now that's you may destroy a card in hand. And that's you may. Hmm. Okay, no. I thought Spectral Echo meant I had to destroy a card in hand. And what I didn't want to do is I didn't want to destroy a good card. But actually, it says may. So undo what I just said. I am going to discard it. There we go. Draw five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Got some really good cards now. Um, right. Okay. Next up is it's the Nemesis. So Needlemore attacks. Gravehold suffers two damage. And we get another card. And this is, it's an attack card, Dispel. Now, we don't have Edelheim's ability fully charged, so we can't do anything about it. So it unleashes twice. One, two. The player with the most prepped spells discards their most expensive prepped spell. Ah. Oh. So unfortunately, Edelheim has to discard Essence Theft. So that's gone. That disappears, and then at the end of the Nemesis's turn, we get a Strike. The Strike is the player with the lowest life suffers two damage. We had that last time. Edelheim suffers two damage. That gets shuffled back in. Three of these counters go. Okay. And again, if you are watching this, um, this is just one of, I think it's three or four nemesis that are included in the base game. Um, and yeah, your, your strategy that you choose against each one will be different. I'm going to cover some extra bits at the end of this video about how you actually would play the normal game. Right, next up is the nemesis again. So Needlemore attacks, does another two damage, down to 27. That's not too bad. Is that right? 27 doesn't seem like, because it started at 30. I think that's wrong. Ah, uh, right, yeah, that's wrong. 19, thank you. <laughs> I was going to say, we've taken more than three damage. Right, Gravehold is now on 17 life. Um, we get another card. Ah, Venomite. It's a nine health minion. And its ability is that the player with the lowest life suffers two damage or any player discards a prepped spell that costs three or more. Okay, nothing we can do about that now, but we now have big decisions to make because there's 13 life worth of, of minions here. We've still got 51 on the Nemesis. We hit the Nemesis a lot early, but now we seem to have slowed down a bit. Hmm. I, I don't want to keep this in play because that's going to start hitting the, the weakest character constantly and kill them. Well, exhaust them. Right, player number one, Edelheim. 
So Edelheim does the Spectral Echo. Two damage and destroy a card in hand. So we're going to deal two damage to Needlemore. Where's the two? There's the two. Okay, destroy a card in hand. I'm going to destroy a crystal because we don't want it. Next, we have the Focusing Orb. Focus any player's breach. And we're going to use it. We're going to be very selfish and we're going to focus our own breach. We are then going to prep. No, here's, here's what we're going to do. We are going to play. Oh, no. I was going to open the four breach and put planar insight inside, but I'm not. I'm going to play two ether to get my last charge. And then we're going to play another two ether to buy, I don't know. Do we want anything else that's worth two? Oh, we're going to prep that. Uh, what can we do with two ether? I could buy some jade, but I think at this stage, I don't think I want to. So I'm actually going to keep that in hand. Yeah, going to keep that in hand. Right, that is the end of Edelheim's turn. Let's put some cards in there. Let's put that one there and that one there. And we draw four. Two, three, four. Okay, next up is Mist. Okay. So Mist has this, which is another Spectral Echo. Two damage, that's the Needlemore is gone. Yes, nice. Except we've got this nasty thing here. Um, destroy a card in hand, we're going to destroy a crystal. We then have eight ether. So remember the diamond cluster is two and then the next one is four plus another two is eight. Hmm, do we start buying bigger cards or do we charge up our ability? I'm not sure, I'm tempted I am tempted to boost these charges up and use them. It's really interesting, these, these choices that I've got. I could spend all of this on here, or I could do that. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend four on two charges, and then I'm going to spend another four on buying a focusing orb. There you go. Right, that's Mist, Mist's turn done. Those two cards go there, those two cards go there, we draw five. Her deck is too big, we need to be getting rid of some of these cards. That is it, that was the fifth cycle round. Shouldn't you draw one more card for Edelheim? Says Randy. And Mark as well. Yeah, I don't know why I didn't... Why didn't I draw? Why didn't I draw five? I don't know. <laughs> what was I thinking? Ah, Kabuki Kid is here. Hi Kabuki Kid, thank you for joining in. We are, I don't know how far we are through actually. I would have said we're probably about halfway through. It doesn't look like it, um, but I think we are because our damage should start increasing. But then again, the enemies are gonna get tougher. Right, here we go, next round or next cycle. It's player number one, Edelheim. So Edelheim has play in our insight, deal two damage plus one additional damage for each of your open breaches. That's four damage. So what are we gonna do it to? I, do we do it to the nemesis? No. I think we're gonna we're gonna try and get rid of Venomite. So Venomite is down to five. Then we are going to play. We got one, two, three, four. We've got six. So uh, with six, we are going to buy another planar insight. Uh, and an ally may draw a card and discard a card. So draw and discard. And then these go to the discard pile. Now, what order are we going to put these in? Uh, that one, then that one, then those three. Done. Flip that over. Draw five. Two, three, four, five. Okay, nice. Lots of damage output here. We need to get that breach open. Next up is the Nemesis. So Venomite attacks. The player with the lowest life suffers two damage, which is Edelheim. Edelheim is down to four. Ouch. Next. It is another minion. Now this is only a little minion. It's only got three health, but when damage is dealt to this minion, reduce that damage to one. Okay, right. So <laughs> it's only got three health, but any amount of damage done to it is reduced to one. 
Uh, the persistent ability is any player suffers damage equal to this minion's current life. Okay. Okay. Starting to get a little bit worried now. We'll see what happens. Next up is the Nemesis again. Ugh. So Venomite does another two damage to Edelheim. Edelheim is now down to two life. All right, he's in trouble. Oh dear. Oh dear indeed. Right, the Cauterizer. Any player suffers damage equal to this minion's current life. It's going to have to be missed. Because we don't want to exhaust Edelheim. Okay, and then we get another card. It's Blood Cry. It's a power card. To discard it, we have to lose four charges. We can do that. Yeah, we can totally do that. Um, and it will unleash four times if we if that happens. But that's not going to happen. We are going to get rid of four charges. Oh, we could actually spend five charges to get rid of it. No, <laughs> let's keep it um, because we can discard it with four charges. Right. Next is Edelheim. So let's let's do it. Let's spend four charges to discard this blood cry. There you go. That's that gone. There was no casting phase, which I should have done first, but there wasn't one. Uh, then we have a spectral echo to put in there. We have another spectral echo to put in there. We have, oh, we don't quite have enough. I only have three ether, so I can't open this breach. But what we can do is I can spend three ether to focus this breach. And then I can put the card into the focused breach. Okay, Edelheim is done. Draw five cards. Spark it, Paul. This one, yes. Yeah, you basically need to hit this with little amounts of damage. Not big damage, which is what Edelheim's got. Edelheim's gone for big damage output. Edelheim is probably going to be taking on the Nemesis. Um, okay, next is player two. No spells. Right, we're going we're gonna to have to start sparking it. We have Mage's Talisman. So we gain a charge. Edelheim gains a charge as well. Uh, we then have, oh, now this is not good. Let's not put that there. Right, we only have one ether. The problem that's happened here is Mist has gone for too many spells and has not got the ether to open any number of breaches. I knew it would backfire at some point. So we're, we're actually just going to put Spectral Echo in. Um, we're going to play Crystal, gain the ether and not do anything with it, but we've got to keep these two cards in hand which is not ideal. And then we draw three. One, two, three. Now, are we going to use Mist's ability? Yes, we are. We're going to use Mist's ability, Divine Augury, get rid of all of those charges to allow Edelheim to draw four cards. One, two, three, four. It's going to have an awesome turn next. Uh, Mist's special might help. Yes, yeah, just done that. Cool. Next up is Mist again. So we have a Spectral Echo, it's two damage. Now, do we do it on the Cauterizer? Uh, it's a bit of a waste. Let's do it on Venomite. I say it's a bit of a waste because it's two damage that would have been reduced to one. So we're gonna do it on Venomite. You may destroy a card in hand. We're gonna destroy the Spark. Yeah, okay. Uh, then we're going to prep a spark. We're then going to play a mage's talisman again for again another charge here and another charge here. Uh, we've then got we've got three. Oh no 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 no! We're going to play the garnet shard to cast any player's prepped spell. Okay. And we're going to cast essence theft because what that's going to do is that gets cast. And it's going to deal three damage and it gets rid of this. So being able to cast other people's spells on your turn, this is Mist's special card. It's really good. Now, I have a rules question for people watching in the chat. Mist has just played the card that says cast any player's prep spell, which means the ability of Essence Theft is cast. You may discard a card in hand if you do any player gains one life. So I think that that is Mist that is doing it because it's Mist that's casting the spell. And whilst I don't really want to discard Jade, um, I think we're going to have to because Edelheim is low on health. So I think it is Mist that discards the card. 
That goes back up. That goes there. And this go is done. That was pretty awesome. That goes there. We get five cards. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Next up is cycle six around the cards. Don't forget to discard Adelheim's cards on the playmat. Yeah, thank you. I'm always forgetting that. Thank you. Uh, so that, they actually should be there. I don't have that problem when I'm playing in uh, real life. So obviously, I'm streaming it, so I'm a little nervous. And also, I'm running two characters. That's my excuse. Right, cycle six. Here we go. Uh, when you cast other people's spells, you play it as if you cast it. I, th I thought so. I mean, it does say you cast it. So thank you very much for clarification on that. Okay, here we go. Next cycle. Player two, missed. So we have a spark, one damage. That's one damage off that, nice. Next up, we're gonna play focusing orb to focus any player's breach, and we're gonna focus this. So that is now open. You can see on here, plus one damage on cast. Any spell that is in this breach uh, will get an extra one damage when it's cast. Spectral Echo in there, and then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, we have seven. Now we're not gonna make the same mistake again, we've got seven. So what we're going to do is we're going to buy hmm, I think we're going to open breach number two that costs two and we're going to buy another mage's talisman. Yeah, let's keep doing that. Then we're going to put these cards in like that and draw five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, next up is Edelheim. Edelheim with his massive amount of cards. Right, so we have Spectral Echo, two damage, destroy a card in hand. The two damage is reduced to one. Destroy a card in hand. Crystal, gone. Next, Spectral Echo gets rid of that. Nice. Yeah, I love it when these turn order cards are in our favour. Destroy another card in hand. Gone. Next, Planar Insight in there. Another planar insight in there. Um, next, focusing orb. We're going to use that to focus this. Okay, now if I can get five this turn, I can. Oh, I absolutely can. I can get one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to open this. Yeah, so one, two, three, four five to open this breach which means all of the breaches are opened which means planar insight is doing six damage now seven in here wow yeah yeah this is really ramping up now uh, an ally may draw a card and then discard a card yes and yes okay that's that done uh these cards all go to the discard pile let's put that one in first then we'll put that one in, then that one in, then that one in, then that one in. Okay, all done. Edelheim is a little bit weak. Um, open Breach 3 also gives one damage, does it? I think I've got the wrong tiles. So unfortunately, because I've got multiple copies of this game, I think I might have actually put the wrong, closed, the wrong Breach 3s out. Apologies again for that. I've got the ones from a different thing. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So that should actually be there. I thought it was. So these must be from a different version of the game. <laughs> Apologies for that. I don't know which version they are from, but you're absolutely right, Chris, that an opened breach three is also plus one damage. So we just need to swap these things over. There we go. Right, okay. Um, so could I have put that in there? Yeah, I think I could. Yeah, so I could have put that in there. There we go. Uh, ah, that breach is from Legacy. Right, yeah, as I say, all of my breaches got kind of mixed up and I assumed they were all the same. My bad, and thank you very much for helping me with that in the chat. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, who's next? It's Edelheim again. All right, are you ready for it? Here we go. Planar Insight. In breach four, with everything open, is seven damage. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven damage and another seven damage is 14 damage to the nemesis. Wowzers. One, two. Right, the nemesis is down to 37. All of a sudden things are looking uh, a lot more positive. We're going to put a spectral echo in there. We're going to put another spectral echo in there. We're going to put an essence theft in there. We've then got three ether here. We're just going to use that to generate a charge and discard the other card. Okay, there you go. I think the plan now for Edelheim is to just cast spells and do as much damage as he can. One, two, three, four, five. He says drawing no spells whatsoever. <laughs> right, next up. Uh, discarded the cards. Yep. Is the Nemesis. Uh, the Nemesis goes away, cries a bit and licks his wounds, I think. So there are no cards on the display. We now get... It's another minion. This is Scorn. The Persistent Effect is Gravehold suffers three damage. Now, at this point in the game, I'm now starting to think... Do we just leave this? Because we can last six attacks from Scorn. And if we can kill the Nemesis before that, we should focus all of our efforts on this. We'll, we'll see what happens. We will see. Right, next in the turn order is player two. So we need to actually make that decision now. What do you think I should do in the chat? Should I get rid of Scorn or leave Scorn and actually now just go for the Nemesis? I'm tempted to go for the Nemesis. That's what I'm leaning towards. Um, uh, ah, yeah, somebody in the chat is watching and YouTube had reduced your resolution to 144p. Yeah, up it. I'm broadcasting in 1080. <laughs> so no wonder it was all blurry. Uh, yeah, what do you think I should do? Attack Scorn or attack the Nemesis? Focus on the Nemesis, says Johan. Yeah, that's, that's what I was leaning towards. Let's do that. Right. Whose go is it? It's Mist's go. So Spectral Echo, two damage on the Nemesis and destroy a card in hand. I'm actually just going to put this here because it's easier for me to reach. Destroy a card in hand, we're going to destroy the crystal. Or destroy the spark. No, we'll keep the spark. Destroy the crystal. Right. Main phase. We're going to prep that. We're going to prep that. We're going to play the Mage's Talisman. I really like this Mage's Talisman because I like charges. Oh, look, we've got five charges on Edelheim again. And then we have two, which we will use to buy another charge. There you go. All done. So that goes there, that goes there. And we get one, two, flip over, three, four, five. Okay. Next up is the Nemesis. So Scorn attacks and Gravehold either suffers three damage or unleashes twice. We'll, we'll take three damage on Gravehold. Then we get another card, which is Topple. Unleash twice. Uh-oh. And Gravehold suffers four damage. Now we can cancel this. I think we should cancel it. At some point you're fighting minions for ages but never progress, so you have to shift your focus. Yes. Um, I think I'm going to use... Edelheim's ability to cancel this card. The reason I'm doing that is I don't like the card, but also Mist has got two Mage's Talismans in hand. So Edelheim is going to get two charges back, and if the Mage's Talisman would have... It'd be basically wasted if Edelheim couldn't take the charges. So we'll do that. Absolutely nullified it. We're done. How many times round is this? Seven? I've lost count. It doesn't actually matter. I'm just kind of counting the cycles just out of interest. But yeah, it doesn't matter. You just keep going. Okay, so is it player one? It is Edelheim. Here we go. We have three damage and destroy a card in hand. Three damage down to 32. Three damage down to 29. Okay, destroy another card in hand, if we want to. I don't know whether I want to. It is May. Hmm. No, 
I'm not going to. I'm not going to destroy a card in hand. Then we're going to do Essence Theft, uh, which is three damage. One, two, three. Uh, discard a card in hand to gain a life. That would mean I don't have five. No, that's fine. I'm going to discard the Amethyst Shard to gain a life. Okay. Then we're going to play the Focusing Orb, but this time we're going to play the Focusing Orb. We're going to destroy it to give Gravehold three life. There you go. So we've got a little bit of a safety buffer. Uh, then we have four Ether here, which we're going to use to get two charges. There you go. Done. Wow, look at this deck. One, two, three, four, five. It's actually, it's a 10 card deck. Yeah, we've done lots of destroying of cards. So it's really lean, focused deck. Planar in the side. It's just 14 damage every other turn. It's awesome. Right, next up is player number two, Mist. So, two damage, and a card in hand, and a spark for another damage. So that's three damage. Yeah, I think your days are numbered, mate. Uh, we'll discard this one. Uh, then we're going to put a spark into there. We're going to play the Mage's Talisman twice to gain two charges here, two charges here. We'll then blow all of the charges of the Divine Orb. I don't think I've ever used abilities as much as this, but that's because I've not played with Mage's Talisman before, except in this learning game. Uh, so... Edelheim draws four cards. One, two, three, four. Yeah, he's cycling through his deck super quick. I'm going to keep that in hand because that's going to get us more next time. Those go there because there is the other one. One, two, three, four. Okay, that is missed. Done. Next up is Edelheim. So we're going to prep Planar Insight. We're going to prep Planar Insight. We're going to prep Essence Theft. We're going to prep Spectral Echo. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Boom. Um, we're then going to play that for two ether to get our fifth charge so we can lock down another card that comes out. Uh, I've then got another four. Mist can draw a card and then discard a card. Okay. Um, what we're going to do with, with four? We'll buy... We'll buy a focusing orb. Yeah, why not? Because we can just discard it. Oh, we can destroy it to get stuff back. So that's going to go there. 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 We've got to keep this card in hand, but that's fine. We draw four. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Then we've got this sorted now. No need to buy anything. It's the end of the game. Yep, yeah, you're right. We're, we're getting close. Um, but Edelheim's deck is so small, he's going to get the cards back that he buys pretty much straight away. Okay, next up is Mist. Yeah, we've been very lucky with the turn order deck. The two Nemesis cards are on the bottom. Um, so we do one damage. Ping. Uh, that's it. We've then got a focusing orb. Now, do we want to play this on our own thing? No, I think we're just going to destroy this to put Gravehold up to 20. That That's easily enough of a safety buffer now. We're on the home run. We're going to prep Spectral Echo and we're going to play this. Uh, this is six. Um, we'll get rid of that. And we're going to buy Wildfire Whip because I've not bought one yet and I don't know what it does. And it's probably not going to come back, but we will see. One, two three four five might do might not okay so now we have the nemesis so first of all gravehold suffers three damage or unleashed twice we'll, we'll take the three damage and then we get another card and if it's super bad we can get rid of it it's the jagged one it is a minion uh oh my god look at that it's got 14 health and its persistent ability is to unleash twice ouch Okay, 
and then it's the nemesis again. So Gravehold suffers three damage. One, two, three. And then unleash twice, which is that and that, which means at the end of the nemesis turn, we get a strike. Gravehold suffers five damage. Okay, so maybe it wasn't the wrong thing to do. Because Gravehold is, if I hadn't been sacrificed, if I hadn't been destroying um, this focusing orb, Gravehold would be down to three life and we'd be almost over. So yeah, that was the right thing to do. Those three go. Okay, next round might be the last round. Because Edelheim is about to do one billion damage to the Nemesis. Slightly exaggerating there. Okay, so here we go. We're going to cycle round. Gravehold is down to nine life. The characters are okay. Yeah, I think the characters are okay. We can suffer another attack from the Jagged One without it having any adverse effect on us. So yeah, here we go. Did we miss a Nemesis card draw? I don't think so. I did two of them. Or did I? Oh no, you're right, I did. Yeah, the second Nemesis one, I should have done a card draw. Thank you very much, Rick. It is Sunder, um, which to be honest, we're just gonna get rid of. I'm looking at it and I'm reading yeah, no, I'm reading that and that's bad. So we're going to get rid of it. Thank you, Rick. Thought it was going too well. Uh, right, so I think we're all set now. I think we're ready. I think we've fixed that problem. Got too excited there. Edelheim. 7, 14, 17, 19 damage. Okay, 19 damage. <laughs> He's down to three. Oh, bless. Poor little Rageborn. Um, I can destroy a card in hand and I can discard a card to gain a life. Yeah. It doesn't really matter now, to be honest. Um, I, I will discard a card to gain a life. Um, I will destroy a card just because I can. I'm going to prep that. I'm going to play that to give Gravehold three more life. Twelve. Uh, and then we're going to play that to gain a charge, just because I can. That goes there. We get five cards. One, two. Flip over. Three, four, five. Now, if it's Edelheim again, we win. It's not. It's Mist. Mist can only deal two damage. So we deal two damage. The Rageborn is down to one health. Um, I can destroy a card in hand. It really doesn't matter at this point. Yeah, whatever. Prep that, prep that, play the Mage's Talisman to gain some charges. It's not enough to make any difference. Uh, we'll play Jade to gain another charge. Yeah, it doesn't actually matter at this stage because the next time we have a player turn, we win, which could be now. And it's not, it's the Nemesis. So Gravehold suffers three damage or unleash twice, but I don't want to. Uh, then unleash twice, but that's fine because it's only if it's got four or more Fury tokens. And then we get a card that we can't cancel, but thankfully it's a power card. It has a power of one on it. Let's see what happens. It might go off. Yes, it's going off. Okay, so it's keeping us, it's keeping it close to the wire. Um, Gravehold suffers three damage, one, two, three, unleash twice, one, two, this goes and we have Doomagus. The player with the most charges suffers four damage and loses all of their charges. That's going to be missed. I could have taken on it at Edelheim because they have both the same. So that's fine. That goes there, those go, that's gone. But then at the end of the turn, we get a strike. I don't know if I shuffled these or not. Yeah, drum roll. I was, you know, I could have won then and suddenly two Nemesis cards came out. I've just got to survive this. Just got to survive this. It is any player suffers four damage. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that damage on Mist. You shouldn't do. Okay, I shouldn't do. I should take it on Edelheim. But I'm going to take it on Mist. No, I'm not. No. 
I'll, I'm, I'm gonna, I wanted to explain what happens when you're exhausted because I think the rules for exhaustion are really cool. I'm going to take it on Edelheim because that's the thing to do. And I'll, I'll explain in a minute what happens when you're exhausted. There you go. Three tokens get removed. That gets shuffled in. Who's going to win the game for us? It is Edelheim. Three damage. Boom. Nemesis dead. I thought about 20 minutes ago, we got this sorted. This is easy. And then all of a sudden, this all seemed to spiral out of control. Gravehold got down to really low life and we did it. So yeah, thank you very much for, for joining me today. Now, before I go, uh, yeah, thank you for bearing with me. It's been two hours. I didn't think this would be two hours. Uh, I'm very hungry. But before I go, I just want to say a few things. First of all, the exhaustion rules in this game are really interesting because in all games like this that I've played, when one player goes down to zero life, they're out. They take no further part in the game. In this game, that's not how it works, okay? When you are exhausted in this game, you still play the game. First of all, things happen. You lose, I think you lose one of your breaches, um, but you're, you actually still play the game. So you're not dead, you're not knocked out, you are exhausted. You still play the game, but you're in a bit of a weakened state. Any time you were to take damage from now on in the game, Gravehold takes two damage instead. So you are still playing the game. That's the important thing. When you're exhausted, you're not out of the game. All, but if all players get exhausted, then you lose. Okay. So I, I love the way that this game handles um, the exhaustion mechanics. As I say, normally when a player is exhausted, they're out. Now, for those people who, uh, who are learning the game, what I want to tell you is that this game is a lot more than what you've just seen here. There are a number of different nemesis is included in the game. This was the Rageborn. There are, as I say, there are three or four included in the core set. Because I've got uh, War Eternal and I've got Legacy and I've got some other packs as well, I have lots of different nemesis. Now, that doesn't just increase the replayability because you have so many different nemesis to fight and the strategies that you, strategies that you will use based on each one will be different. Here's how the market works. And this is possibly, I mean, there's so many cool things about this game, the exhaustion, not knocking you out the game, the fact that your deck flips over so it doesn't have the same problem as every single other deck builder where you shuffle your deck and therefore you might not get your combos. In this game, you can build your own combos in your deck, which is just really, really cool. Another very, very cool part of this game is you build the market at the start of the game, okay? You choose which nine cards you want to play with. There are randomizer cards included with the game. And you can actually do it however you want. You can have full control over the market. Remember, it has to be three gems, two relics and four spells. But as the group of players, you choose what you want in the market. And I find that incredibly cool and interesting. So, for example, you say, right, we're playing against Rageborn. Let's have a look through my entire collection and let's see which of these cards are going to be most suited to defeating this particular nemesis. The first time you do it, certainly the nemesis get more difficult. This one is difficulty level two out of ten. OK, some of the later nemesis cards are really tough and really, really difficult and really challenging. And what you'll do is you'll play against them and you'll probably lose. And then you'll look through your deck of cards and you'll think, oh, wait a minute, this particular spell would be really good against that because, you know, of the minions that are included or something like that. So you actually build your market at the start of the game in order to fight against the particular rage board. I just think that's a really cool idea. You don't have to do that. There's randomizer cards in there if you want to go completely random. A few people have suggested that you would throw in uh, five random gems, four random relics and six random spells. And then out of that, choose which ones you want. So you're not choosing from your entire collection. That's pretty cool as well. Or there are some preset ones that you can use. There's loads of different characters. There's so much more uh, in this game, even just the core set. There's multiple characters, multiple nemesis, multiple cards from here. That brings us to the end of the first video that I'm doing for Aeon's End. I will be speaking with Stronghold Games to see what they want me to do next. My thinking is that I'm going to play with the core set again. I'm going to choose a different nemesis and I'm actually going to put some messages out there on social media and say, 
this is the nemesis that I'm playing. Which nine cards should I have in my market? And I will allow people to um, basically help me customize which market I should use and possibly even which characters because certain characters are better against certain nemesis than other ones. I just picked these two at random, but it could be that you could choose other ones. We will see. I would love to do more video coverage of this game um, and, and we'll see how it goes. I also wanted to mention while I'm here, Aeon's End Legacy, because uh, I'm currently playing through Aeon's End Legacy using Tabletop Simulator, because obviously people can't come round at the moment, uh, but I do have a copy of it. It's just off camera, just there. If you are interested in this game, if you like the sound of this game and you don't currently own any Aeon's End, I would strongly recommend starting with Aeon's End Legacy. The reason for that is Aeon's End Legacy actually is a prelude to all of this. And in Aeon's End Legacy, you start with a character that doesn't have any of these special abilities at all. It doesn't have a special card. It doesn't have charges. It doesn't have that. What Aeon's End Legacy does is it starts you off as like a trainee breach mage and then all of the stuff will unlock as the game goes on. Your character will develop, your character will get better. You even start the game only with three breaches and they will develop as the game goes on and you get your fourth breach later in the game. And what it does is it drip feeds the rules to you over a period of a few chapters. The story's good, the narrative's great. We're only on chapter three and I'm absolutely loving it at the moment. But yes, if you don't want to jump in to Aeon's End, then you can start with Aeon's End Legacy. Um, and that's it. If you have any questions about the game, um, please put them in the comments below. I'm more than happy to answer any questions about this. Thank you very much for the chat, for the couple of rules glitches that I made, forgetting the fact that um, I should have taken the top five cards off the deck with two players and that the three breach should have been one damage on cast. We fixed those during the play. Um, so yeah, hopefully that was, that was okay. I'm gonna go downstairs now because it's chicken enchiladas for dinner and I'm absolutely starving. Um, thank you very much for watching been really good doing this. As I say, one of my favourite games. Love cooperative deck building games and I love the tweaks to this game that make it very different from the other ones. They are minor tweaks to the core rules of most deck building games, but those minor tweaks take it up a notch in terms of, you know, how good I think the game plays. Anyway, that's everything. Thank you very much to everybody for watching, either live or if you're watching this afterwards. Hope you found it useful. Take care, enjoy the rest of your weekend and I will see you all soon. Cheers all. Gaming Rules is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.